Hey you, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be giving you everything you need to know about how to incorporate a business. If you're thinking about starting a business for the first time, or even if you already have a business and want to incorporate it, then this video is for you. Now I know the sound of incorporating a business may sound intimidating, but it can be broken down into some simple, easy steps. In fact, today I'm gonna break down those steps into six specific steps you can implement in order to incorporate your business. Hi again, I'm Crystal, CPA and co-founder of Life Accounting. We are an accounting firm dedicated to helping small businesses grow through accounting and tax. Before I dive into this video and break down the six steps that you need to know in order to incorporate a business, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Sound good? Let's get started. Now, before I give you the step-by-step -step on how to incorporate your business, it's important to first understand what incorporating means. Incorporating your business is the process of registering your business as a corporation, not to be confused with an LLC. Corporations are controlled by three parties, your shareholders, board of directors, and officers. Shareholders own the corporation by purchasing stock and they elect a board of directors who decide on matters of policy and management. The board then appoints officers such as the CEO, CFO, secretary, etc., who run the corporation on a daily basis. S corporations and C corporations are the two main types of corporations, C corps being the most popular. For purposes of this video, I'll be explaining the process of incorporating a C corporation. And just for your information, C corporations are taxed once at the company level and distributions of profits or dividends to shareholders are taxed again on shareholders' personal tax returns. Now the very first step to incorporating your business is making sure you comply with licensing laws. Not every business is required to have a business license. In fact, most businesses don't require it. But if you're in a more regulated industry like food service or childcare, then there are definitely more licensing requirements. Make sure to comply with your local licensing laws in the beginning of incorporating your business so you don't find yourself in trouble later on. The second step to incorporating your business is choosing a business name. Perhaps you already have one, good. Or perhaps someone else already has that name, bad. You need to make sure that your business name is available. To do this, you need to go to your state's Secretary of State's website and do a business search. Here's what the process looks like for Georgia. If your name is available, then great, you can proceed with incorporating. But if it is taken, you'll need to come up with a different name. The third step when incorporating is putting together your governing documents. For corporations, this is called your bylaws. Your corporate bylaws describe how your corporation is managed and operated. It contains information about shares, voting rights, board meetings, and other pertinent information such as information about board meetings and annual meetings that are required for every corporation, the number and type of shares that the corporation can issue if issuing stock, fiscal year of the corporation for tax and bookkeeping purposes, procedures for amending the articles of incorporation and bylaws. Your corporate bylaws are much more detailed than your articles of incorporation, which I'll touch on later. Most states don't require you to file your bylaws, but they are critical to have handy with your other corporate documents. You may be required to provide them in case you're audited or applying for a business loan. And most lawyers can help you with this process of putting together your corporate bylaws. The fourth step to incorporating your business is to file your paperwork with your state or the state you're incorporating in. Most states will allow you to file your articles of incorporation online through your Secretary of State's website, or you do have the option of filing by mail. Every state is different, but in general, your articles of incorporation should include basic information about your company, including business name, mailing address, registered agent name and address, business purpose, and names and addresses of your business officers. It's very important to make sure you complete the Articles of Incorporation in its entirety so the state doesn't automatically reject your filing. If you find yourself stuck on a section, you can always call your state's Secretary of State's office. Someone there will be able to help you complete the form. Just don't expect tax or legal advice. 
Oh, and if you're wondering what a registered agent is, let me explain. A registered agent is an individual or business that accepts tax and legal documents on behalf of the business. A registered agent can be you, a friend, or a family member or you can hire a company to act as your registered agent. Whoever it is, they need to be available to accept important business documents on your behalf. The fifth step to incorporating your business is to hold your first meeting. After you filed your paperwork with the state, you need to hold your first meeting. During the meeting, the board members should document the funding of the corporation, including who contributed money, assets, services for partial ownership and what ownership percentage each shareholder will own, authorize and issue shares of stock, if applicable, and elect your officers, CEO, CFO, etc. At some point during the meeting, each person should agree to and sign the bylaws. With future board meetings, make sure to keep a record of the meeting minutes that describe what was discussed. The sixth and final step in incorporating your business is applying for your EIN, or employer identification number. This is completely free to do on irs.gov. After you have your EIN, you'll then be able to open a business bank account. This is critical and necessary for keeping your personal finances separate from your business. Now let's assume you already have a business, such as an LLC, and want to incorporate. Most states allow you to convert your LLC to a corporation. A lot of states allow a simplified process known as a statutory conversion. With a statutory conversion, you can automatically transfer your LLC's assets and liabilities to a corporation without having to separately form a new corporation and dissolve the LLC. You'll need to file a certificate of conversion and any other required documents with the state and pay a filing fee. These types of forms are normally accessible on your state's Secretary of State website. All right, if you completed all of these steps, congratulations, you've incorporated your business. I hope you found this video helpful and will use the steps outlined here to get you started. If you did find this video helpful, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos to help your business. Bye for now.